Welcome back to the fog, my ghouls and goblins. I'm your casual crypt keeper, Taylor, and I've got something for you. So come stay a while and listen. Ed and Lorraine Warren, the famed demonologists, made a storied career of exploring the paranormal. They researched everything they could. Even the cases they weren't able to physically get up to, they still had their eyes on. Let's take a listen to some things out of the logbook. Here's the top five terrifying aliens Ed and Lorraine Warren discovered. Aliens. Are they really out there among us, or is it all just fiction exaggerated for clicks? Let me know down below in the comments if you're a true believer. Number five, Hopkinsville. In 1955, two families in Hopkinsville told a story that would go down in infamy to UFO enthusiasts. They claimed that not only did they see a flying saucer soar right above their property, but that they engaged in a firefight against extraterrestrial invaders. Master Chief would be so proud. Let's take a listen to this wild story. So night was falling over Kelly, a rural area outside of Hopkinsville, Kentucky in the summer of 55. Billy Ray Taylor, and that's the most country name I've ever heard in my life, was taking a trip to the family well. And at the time, he was staying with Glennie Lankford at their farmhouse alongside the Sutton family, who had all left the carnival life. And a quick aside before I get too distracted here, a bunch of carnival workers fighting aliens is absolutely the plot to a great direct-to-VHS 80s movie, I'm sure. Anyway, Billy Ray was outside gathering water when he saw a bright light shoot across the sky. Now, Billy Ray swore he saw a saucer above zipping through the clouds and landing behind a patch of trees. He told everybody back at the farm about a round metallic object with rainbow-colored streaks trailing behind it. Sounds a lot like my gamer desk. Now, Billy Ray was known to exaggerate, so at first, no one really believed him, which I kinda get. I wouldn't really believe someone named Billy Ray either, lest he was talking about his heart. He convinced somebody else to go outside with him just to get some eyes on it, and they saw a glowing figure emerging from the woods. The pair then ran back to the house to arm themselves. They grabbed 22 LR rifles and claimed they saw something with an inhuman face pressing its nose against the window. They opened fire and claimed that the sounds of their bullets sounded like they were connecting with metal. Police investigated the next day and found no traces of any aliens, just discarded shells and casings. Now since then, Hopkinsville has embraced this bit of folklore and now holds a festival dedicated to celebrating their alien visitors. Did they ever truly visit? I gotta say though, they're probably not gonna come back anytime soon if that's how we greet them. They were just trying to be friendly walking out in the woods and we shot at them. Ain't that human? And if you're looking for more terrifying tales of extraterrestrial horror, cryptids, ghouls, ghosts, and goblins, well, Top 5 Scary is the place for all of that and then some. So stay subscribed, and more importantly, stay scared. But also stay listening, because we got a lot more video to go. Number 4, The Men in Black. Our next encounter comes from a Redditor posting his story. His name is User Ubero Bob, and he details a bizarre encounter with the fabled Men in Black. No, not like the movies, but this is a stranger than fiction. The Redditor describes being 26 years old in the summer of 2007. He was living at his parents house at the time and it was a stormy night and he was staying in playing World of Warcraft. Awesome way to start a horror story. Makes it a lot more believable for me. He was finishing up one of the longest chain quests in the game, the opening of An Karaj, if there's any Azeroth heads out there, and the internet went out. And if you know anything about that quest line, you know how much that would devastate you. The Redditor was frustrated and beaten down and he tried to investigate the internet to see if there was anything he could do to fix it, figuring it was knocked out by the storm. He then heard a smashing knock at his door. When he he went to see who it was, he saw three incredibly tall, pale men dressed in all black suits, one of them holding a folder and another holding a device that looked like a Geiger counter. He opened the door and the man in front greets in a low, monotone voice. He asks the men in black what's going on and they tell him that they need to check the water from the house's faucet. He's kind of confused, but he says sure, and from here all the lights in his house shut out, like pitch black, he says. The men in black tell him to stay calm. They turn on flashlights in their breast pockets, and as the light shines over the tallest one, the Redditor swears that he saw through the man's face, and saw a metal face underneath it. A moment later, the tallest says, it's begun, and the Geiger counter begins going haywire. The Redditor says he felt excruciating pain all over his body and his vision beginning to blur as he only sees white coming over him. He describes seeing his memories flash through him quickly, seeing the earth above the sky and then feeling like he's falling and then waking up in his bed drenched in sweat, thinking it was all just a terrible dream. Except when he checks the date on his computer, it's been a week since he was last awake. And when he checks inside his closet, the Geiger counter from before is there. So whatever happened, happened. But what happened? And who were they? 
alien visitors? Government agents of the highest order? And did he ever end up finishing the opening of Anchorage? We may never know. Number three, the Sandown Clown. Oh, that's fun to say. Give that a try at home, Sandown Clown. Oh, let me talk about a Sandown Clown. Okay, I'll do it serious. Our next entry is an obscure being whose mystery has taunted investigators for decades, the Sandown Clown. Sandown is a seaside resort near the Isle of Wight in the United Kingdom. Of course the United Kingdom has an Isle of Wight. It's a popular tourist spot where tourists pass through every year through its shops, restaurants, and natural beauty. And while it's got a rich culture and history of its own, it's this one event in May 1973 that stood out and what we're talking about today. Like most good cryptid stories, the person who found the creature was a young girl and her playmate. The girl was named Faye and the boy's name has remained anonymous over the years. The two of them were playing games near the lake in the daytime when they both heard a bizarre siren like screech. The two of them went off to investigate cause you know, they're kids. I would just ignore a siren screech personally. And they reached a small marsh between the golf course and the airport. Under a small footbridge, they saw a mysterious hand appear. Now according to the children, a hand wearing a blue glove appeared from under the bridge, followed by a book of some kind being dropped in the water. A figure appeared out of the water and scurried into a nearby hut. The children describe this creature as walking with a strange hopping motion. They say that it screeched at them and it sounded like microphone feedback. They describe the creature as being 7 feet tall with no neck. It wore a yellow hat with a round black knob on its top and strange antenna on the sides. The creature had triangular eyes, a square nose, and extremely white skin and red fringed hair. Hmm. Clown found under a bridge near sewers. I don't really know how I feel about that. I feel like I've seen a clown under a bridge before and it really didn't end well for that little boy. Upon being asked, it told the little girl that its name was Sam and that it was all colors, whatever that means. When asked if it were a human, it said it wasn't. And when asked if it was a ghost, it is reported to have answered, well, not really, but I am in an odd sort of way. All other questions about what it might have been, it only answered with, you know, Classic. And since then, the mystery has never been solved. So what do you think it could have been? Alien visitor from another world? Strange cryptid? Very complicated prank? We may never know. Number two, Valiant Thor. Now our next alien is a truly strange one. It starts as a UFO sighting and gets a lot, lot weirder. According to the account in a 2001 book, Stranger at the Pentagon, on March 16th, 1957, someone identifying themselves as Valiant Thor came forward to the White House and introduced themselves as an envoy from the planet Venus. Now, normally you would not expect someone like that to get very far at all. In fact, not even get past the gate. But in Mr. Valiant Thor's case, allegedly this was enough to get him meetings with several high profile members of the US government, going all the way up to President Eisenhower and Vice President Nixon. The author Frank Stranges shares a report from Harley Andrew Byrd, a man who worked a high clearance position at the Pentagon that was involved with Project Blue Book, the Air Force program dedicated to UFO research. Well, Byrd's department received a police report about somebody who'd been arrested in Virginia who had proclaimed himself a space emissary. And instead of tossing him in an asylum, he was taken to the Pentagon immediately. Byrd's account says that Thor landed in 1957 and spent a few years meeting various high level officials all around the country. Presidents, world leaders, Elvis Presley, so on. The author Frank Stranges claims that he met Thor in 1959 at the Pentagon in the winter, beginning with Thor showing the men a shimmering garment that looked like sunshine made from alien material. So that just sounds delightful. He told him he was sent to Earth to protect humanity from annihilating themselves. And if you're watching this video, we haven't currently annihilated ourselves just yet from nuclear proliferation, so maybe Valiant Thor helped us out more than we realize. I know it's pretty fantastical, it's an out of this world story, so let me know what you think, fact or just total fiction. And finally, at the number one spot is the Flatwoods Monster, a creature that has long since thought to be an alien in origin, and not a cryptid as some have said, and one of my favorite cryptid stories of all time. The Flatwoods Monster was first sighted in West Virginia because of course it was. That's where all the weird stuff lives in the United States. West Virginia is nothing but beautiful mountain landscapes and cryptids all the way down. John Denver left all that part out of his music. The Flatwood Monster was described as being 10 feet tall and roughly 4 feet wide. It's described as being more 
mechanical in nature than its organic, kind of a Darth Vader deal going on. Its most notable feature is its giant head, two gigantic glowing eyes, described as either bright red or bright green, and it's got a big cowl in the shape of a spade behind its big old head, making it look like an alien vampire. Its body was armored with thick vertical pipes, and it's got spindly little arms. That's my favorite little part. The first ever sighting of the Flatwood Monster was in the 50s, 1952 to be specific. Three boys saw something flailing out of the sky hitting the ground nearby. The boys went home and one of them told their mother that they thought they would saw something fall from the sky, maybe an asteroid. And it's always a great idea to bring your mom if you think you're going to go check out an alien. She'll know what to do. They gathered a small search party, just in case, and the group sought out to the farm where the object landed and eventually made their way to the top of the hill, where they saw a large ball of fire and smelled some mist that was making their eyes burn. A person in the search party then noticed that there were two bright glowing green eyes that were floating around in the trees, and he flashed his light to unveil what was hiding in the dark. They were then treated to a full view of the Flatwoods monster in all of its glory. The creature then hissed at them and flew upwards into the night, never to be seen again. Now over the years, detractors have claimed that the Flatwood monster could just have easily been the darkness playing tricks on susceptible young eyes and it might have just been a barn owl, and I, I do kind of see that. It's got a similar enough face shape, but I feel like the size would be hard to misunderstand. Plus. The mist that was making everybody's eyes burn? I don't know many owls that produce mist. And what fell from the sky? If you ask me, Flatwood sounds way more like it's an alien than it does that it's a barn owl. Well my ghouls and goblins, that is all she wrote for today. Thanks so much for watching, creep on creeping on, and I'll see you in the next one I think.